Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Veterinary Roundtable, the podcast where we answer your veterinary-related questions while having some fun along the way. If you enjoyed today's episode or a previous episode, be sure to leave us a review on your podcast provider of choice. And if you have any feedback to offer to improve the Veterinary Roundtable, let us know. Via review. Let us know via a review. Yeah. We've really bumped up the reviews thanks to... Yeah, it's went up. it went up. Activity. Moving on up. Yeah, it went up. To 61. Sad. On up. To 61. <laughs> what was it before, Courtney? We, we're missing Devin 57? today, our other co-host, oh, and she's yeah. always the one who knows. Yeah, that's true. 57, 58. I feel like it was in the 50s, I like but I don't know. Whatever. I don't remember it all. It's more. It's more because now it's 61. It is. Yep. Mm-hmm. So it's that is awesome. Over it's- halfway to 100. Yes. Yeah, we made it, actually. I know. And now we're at 173 on Spotify, which is freaking amazing. So continue leaving us reviews. We love them. Yep. And you might be featured on the podcast because we'll read your review. That's right. Incentive. That's right. We'll shout you you out. to have a little blurb. Mm -hmm. So shout out the review. All right. Here I go. Yeah. All right. Let's do it. (laughs) As a former vet tech, this podcast allows me to really... Oh my God, it's going <laughs> great. Allows me to relive my glory days at the clinic and at the same time gives me the veterinary medicine slash biology knowledge that I crave. You all break down your cases in such a palatable way that's easy to digest. I love hearing how you strategize your treatments and always appreciate the follow-ups from your patients. This has become one of my favorite podcasts, hands down. P.S. Writing this review from your neighboring town, Pendleton. <laughs> Smiley face. <laughs> that's so fun. From at Zartman BL. <laughs> that is so cool. That is so cool. So that's cool. cool. So. I think it's cool that he he she listens to it even though they're not in the vet field anymore. That's really cool. I know. Yeah, we're Live, keeping living the glory days. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Reliving all the information, keeping those yeah. brain cells active. That's pretty cool. I like knowing that we are able to break down our cases because sometimes I feel like even in practice with owners, I word vomit, and you can sometimes just yeah. see the glossiness the go over their eyes, and you're just like, oh, I did it again. <laughs> I did too much. Yeah. Uh, but that's cool mm-hmm. that we're breaking that's it down. very cool. Yeah. I like it. Thanks for your feedback. That's awesome. Very, very cool. Come visit we, us. Yeah. Yeah. Neighbors in the clinic. Come yep. see us. Yeah. All-star veterinary clinic. Stop. By. And Westfield. Okay. okay. We have an exciting announcement. Yes. Mm-hmm. We have new social media channels. Woo woo. We're official. <laughs> Officially <laughs> official. <laughs> We've been trying for the longest time to get it running and we did it. Yes. So it's Instagram and TikTok. And it's at the Veterinary Roundtable all together. Hit us with a follow. <laughs> yeah. Hit the <laughs> follow button. And with a heart. <laughs> a comment. And a comment. There Only you go. nice ones, though. And let us know you were sent from the podcast. What? Well, everybody that follows us from the podcast. <laughs> I think it is the podcast. Hey, listen, share it, right? I yeah. mean, like, yeah. because Tag we us. are going to be putting. We are going to be putting <laughs> other information on there. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it'll be podcast clips, but then also yeah. what is happening in our daily lives at the clinic, as well as information. Yep. Maybe a little preview Fun. of our animals at home. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, we're trying to... Our challenges. Bring in our animals our that we talk about all the time. Yeah. We're trying to really get out there. Yep. Really put ourselves out there. So. Yes. Go check it out. Don't leave us hanging. Don't ghost us. That's right. <laughs> it's like first date. It was the follow, but don't ghost us. Oh, uh, gosh. Okay. I'm Dr. King. I'm Courtney Allen. And I'm Dr. Duckwall. Who was missing last week? So tell oh, us yeah. about your uh, trip. Did you have a good trip? I'm back. Yes. Thanks for asking. I was in Mexico and it was beautiful, warm sun. And I will say I got the dance party started. I oh, did. Way to go. Yeah. I did. <laughs> it was the last... Um, I don't know, evening dinner and right. uh, me and my buddy that I made on the trip, her and I just went out and started dancing and we got the party going. And a couple people were like, because they're, it was for my husband's work and they're like, I've been here, you know, X amount of years and I uh, haven't seen a dance floor like this before. Good job, Ducky. <laughs> you need to go. I thought you'd be proud of me. I am so proud of <laughs> yeah. you. Yeah. Also, I have to get a shout out to all my new friends. There you go. <laughs> I met. just say, did you tell everybody about the podcast? I did. Okay. So all you folks yeah. from Mexico they were yeah. on the trip. Thank you for listening. Thank you for mm-hmm. listening. One already listened when we were there. They oh, listened awesome. to the, the grain free one. Oh, yeah. I believe. And um, yeah. So I was. And then when you guys had your last podcast, I was just hyped at the pool. <laughs> So I was just bragging about it. Yeah. And very yeah. Cool. So hopefully they actually did what they said they were going to do and subscribe and like and listen. Mm-hmm. Okay, good. Let's, that's I awesome. did my duty. The more the merrier. Just so you know. That is. Well, yeah, you did your duty on multiple things. So yeah, I tried. Um, And 
Music is magic. That's yes. all I'm going to say. Um, I have one thing really quick before we get into the rest of the episode. Yes. Um, you were not here two times ago. So the episode before the one with Dr. Levine. Yes. Um, and I introduced a friend mm-hmm. to Dr. Duckwall and then Dr. Schmoke, who was on our who was our um guest. Okay. And so I'd like to introduce you to him, okay? Is it your friend? <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> Jeez. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> oh, the positive potato. This is a positive potato. Do you know what it is? I gave McDivitt a positive pickle for Christmas. I saw it Stop. on her. Have you not seen it? I've seen it on her desk. Yes. But oh, I have a potato. A potato. <laughs> so he'll be joining us every episode I from now on. I love it. Put him on the table. I haven't introduced him to Devin yet. So maybe you should sit in Devin's spot. Okay. Oh, there look at him. so cute. <laughs> That's it. Our positive potato. Can you can you please share your opinion? Please don't be positive. <laughs> He's so cute. Go, buddy, go. Stop it. Is he a sweet potato? <laughs> no. He looks oh, like a russet okay. He looks like a russet potato. <laughs> okay. That's He's rather word. starchy. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> a little starchy. Oh, yeah. a little Coming salty. out with you with the puns. <laughs> okay. Okay. Sorry. I was um, going to try to think of another one just then, but I couldn't. Okay. <laughs> yep. All right. So today's episode. Yes. We are basically doing a you know, deeper dive into last week's episode because Mm -hmm. we basically had that very, not a controversial figure, but a figure on Mm -hmm. last week's episode. And so we, um, just going to touch base about it and yeah. recap and because also Dr. Duckwall wasn't here so then she can give her opinions and I will say I was taking notes and also uh, blowing up their phones with my thoughts too. Yes. So. I so. just wanted to be a part of it. Yeah. <laughs> yes. No, that's, yeah. that's totally cool. But we will resume normal May 10th, just so everyone knows if you it's want actually to actually May pop- 2nd. Harrison Brandt. Oh. Oh. It's not. <laughs> we have, it looks like oh, we're going to so have we're a... Doing, you mean because it's not like, because it's a special guest, it's not a normal episode is what you're saying. <laughs> trust you on the itinerary. So Harrison's telling us to trust him. Yeah, we will have 10th. a special guest yeah. next week. Next week we have a special right? guest. After so look forward the to that. Brought up the grain free stuff, and it is. You're not supposed to say. Who oh, it is. I'm not supposed to say. <laughs> <laughs> not reading the itinerary. We're in so much trouble. I read it. Okay, so we're in trouble. Yes, I read it, but I was misinterpreting it. Okay, so here's just, a tease. Oh. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Okay, wait. Tease, let's tease. just back up. Okay. Okay. So today's episode is going to be a deeper dive into last week's yeah. information. Yes. Next week's episode is going to be a non-controversial figure. Unlike last week's episode. <laughs> uh-huh. So then, get excited. Then yeah. the normal episodes will resume May, May 10th. May 10th. Bingo. Good. I got it. Okay. We okay. made it through. <laughs> That's your recap. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> Go for it. I I I, Girl, I feel like I'm discombobulated. Okay, okay, so basically, um, there's been a lot of inquiries from the last episode. Inquiries, um, Sorry. inquiries, Devin's whatever. Here, however, so. the hell yeah. you say it, and Devin will correct us. Um, but yeah, basically, we just want to thank everyone for your kind words and support. Um, we've been all sharing what we've the feedback that's been received and been given, and um, it's really. I think it's it's awesome. Like even myself being on the outside of it, seeing, listening to it firsthand of how well it was handled, but then also then knowing that other people share the same the same thoughts. So, um, how did you guys feel? I guess kind of briefly going through, you know, the preparation leading up to it, and then also during the actual conversation itself. Like, were you guys really nervous? Were you just more like, let's get this done? How? What were you guys actually thinking? Um, I mean, we had what three total meetings two total meetings about it so we had phone calls for it just kind of preparing ourselves points that we really wanted to talk to or or talk about or come back to if something got off topic Um, and I think I can speak for Devin but I'm pretty much speaking for myself I was very nervous just because as I mean I'm younger and so I don't have the whole knowledge of like I mean, insurances and the things that he was talking about, like Medicare, Medicaid, I'm not super well versed in that. Mm -hmm. And so Devin and I both felt that we didn't have much to bring to the table. But I mean, we have the veterinary knowledge and we can back up the veterinary field and blah, blah, blah. But it was very nerve wracking because I didn't want to like say something wrong or I don't know. Sure. It's just because a lot of people listen to us. So I didn't want to. And I was like, you know, at first I was like, oh, this is amazing. Like, this is going to be so interesting. And then I was like, oh, wait, we're the only people he's talking to. Oh, wait. 
Yeah. Everybody's going to expect something. Oh, All eyes were on us. Oh, right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So like, I mean, you know, I think that we did what we were, we did a good job of like making sure that we knew what the objective was mm -hmm. of the podcast. Like, so we had a goal mm -hmm. with the podcast and then I think, it, but it, but we're not journalists. Like, no, we don't, we don't do interviews for like, yeah, for living. And this is so our then first one. you know it was interesting, especially with someone, um, of his personality who does like to talk. You know, to make sure that he didn't just continue to talk and talk and talk and talk. Because I mean, literally, like you, could, we could have potentially said nothing, and he could have talked the whole time. Yeah, yeah, because he just likes to talk. Yeah, I don't think he's being. I don't think he was being mean about talking or anything like that. I just think that's his personality. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. And so um, there, there was a lot of I was worried that we were going to disappoint someone. Yes. Sure. Do you know what I mean? Like, OK, if somebody's not going to think we're standing up enough, but at the same time, you know, this is a person. It's not right. You know what I mean? And so like it's like, how do you balance mm -hmm. all of that? But I think, and in the end, you're not going to please everyone anyway. Right. But at least I do think it, it did feel like at least listening to it was very it was more conversational mm -hmm. and of course there were times where yeah you know both parties were speaking at the same time right and um kind of tones changed a little bit but you could tell like you had said it too the goal is just to have a straightforward conversation just to like get an honest kind of perspective from both parties and at the end agree to disagree on right honestly the majority of it let's be right. honest but yeah 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 yes it was a really cool experience. I think, yeah, I think it went as well as it could have for the most part. And I think, you know, having said that, it was our most popular episode. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so I think that we feel like that there's a need for that, mm -hmm. you know, um, people willing to have convers difficult conversations. And so I think we'll probably end up interviewing more mm -hmm. controversial figures. Yeah. Yeah. So if you know any, let us know. Yeah, I know. Send we want some suggestions way. just to uh, spice it up. Yeah. And to be honest with you, all these types of conversations probably need like five hours, right? Oh my so gosh, then it's yeah. like trying to prioritize how do you actually say what you want to say, but also let the other party say what they need to say mm -hmm. or feel like they need to say. And it, well, and the podcast was an hour and a half long. Yeah. And now, we could have kept talking. When we were doing it, it didn't feel long. It felt like no. 10 minutes. Right. That went but by so then, fast. Like when we stopped and we were kind of in this place where we started talking about the older vets and I was like, okay, yeah, now we're like at the end of mm -hmm. this like yeah. discussion. Um, I was like, oh my God, it's been an hour. Like I looked at the time on the thing. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh my God, it's been an hour and a half. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like who's going to listen to us for an hour and a half? Yeah. You know, kind of a thing. Yeah. Yeah. So everyone. Here's everyone. <laughs> um, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but um, yeah. So thanks for everybody for tuning in and listening yeah. and trusting mm -hmm. us with the interview. And thank you again, Dr. Levine, for being willing to be on our podcast. Yeah, we yes. very much appreciate it. Yeah, I think that he has, it's it's very interesting, right? I mean, he has controversial opinions. So those opinions aren't liked by people. Mm -hmm. And I think what, and we were, you know, we were talking about this earlier today, like in today's society, people want to villainize the person for their opinions instead of villainizing the opinion. Mm. And so, mm -hmm. and so it, because I think when you do that, it's very, it's, it, you then, you know, and John, I'm a John Maxwell fan girl. So like Duck Wall and I were talking about that and I was showing you that mm -hmm. and like, I love everything and how he says it. It's so easy to understand the mm -hmm. information. And a side note, if you don't know who he is, go find some of his books and read them. They're amazing. Um, but he basically says, you know, like if you if that happens and you villainize the person, you can't trust the person. Mm -hmm. So if you can't trust the person, then you're unwilling to be in dialogue with them. Mm. And so instead of and that's what's happening because people won't come to a table now and talk about mm -hmm. issues or, you know, concerns that they have with, you know, another party on uh, each side of the table because they villainize the person. They cannot trust what you're going to say. And so it's very interesting that that's what we observed yeah with a lot of mm -hmm. what was happening and i think that's was the clue that okay the conversation needs to happen yeah you know did i am not defending how he said it i am not defending what he said i am just saying that as a group we should not villainize the person as much as the comments right so like i don't want to see us as in an the industry. approach like you said yeah i don't want to see us in our industry become what we don't want what we didn't like about him mm -hmm. like i don't want to see us leaving 
reviews. We don't know how he is as a cardiologist or we don't mm, know yeah. how he is as a doctor. Like I don't think, or necessarily as a person. Yeah, he just I don't said think something that behooves us right mm. as an industry to take that approach mm-hmm. to accomplish what it is that you want to accomplish. No, it's doing the same thing just in a different way. Right. You're you're hurting an industry still. Right. In a way. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. We don't so, want it done to us, so don't do it to others. Yeah. I think is the thing. Mm-hmm. Um and I think that's the only thing that I've se- that I've been disappointed with. I don't know if that's the right word. Yeah, I mean, I think it's it's something where you want to take the high road, right? I guess that's another weird way to put it, right. but it's like you don't have to fight fire with fire, right? You know, you can you can try to what we did, not necessarily put water on the fire, but at least try to dim it down a little bit by having a conversation to just try to understand. And honestly, like there's still a lot we don't understand probably from oh, that perspective. Gosh, yes. I mean, <laughs> So many things. We're never gonna fully it, agree with I don't, I'm not sure. Right. But um at least at least we tried. At right. least you tried to at least even explain. I think that was a huge goal, right? Just explain in a nice, respectful, professional way, like, nah, I'm sorry, that's not how it is. I'm sorry right. you're wrong. Like this is actually how it is in our world. It's not apples to apples. It's very different perspectives, very different industries, very different op- orders of operation. And you know, when I went home and Richie asked me how, how did it go? You know, what I told him, I took away from the whole conversation with him and watching, because I feel like as veterinarians, one of the things we do that we do very well is we read body language. And if you watch him on the tape and with the questions and his answers and his, his, when he would talk about certain things and then his mannerisms and there were definitely patterns and What I noticed was a man who loves his cats. So I might have told you this, Doug Walker, I can't remember, um, but I talked to Richie about it for sure. A man who loves his cats and understands the value of the human animal bond. Second thing Mm -hmm. is really sad that not everyone can experience the human animal bond. And he wants everyone else to be able to do it. And he thinks it's because people can't afford care. And so he went about it wrong. Again, I'm, I'm not defending what he did, but that's at the end. That's who that's what I saw. That's sure. who I saw I agree. on the screen was a, was that that's what his whole thing was. Yeah. He he clearly loves his cats. Like, I mean, he pulled it up into. Well, he's done it. In the, he, other he, videos, the cat was too. on the podcast. Mochi or not Mochi. Which one was it? Yeah, he had a cat on the podcast. Yes. Yeah. I mean, it's it's so so he he loves his cats. Yeah, he understands he, and he truly values the human animal bond. He wants everyone else to be able to have it, and he thinks everyone else should be able to have it. Mm. And so that's what I really saw was mm-hmm. someone advocating for those people, right? And again, he didn't do it right, and he didn't he, but I did see somebody who, and Duck, while you know me better than anybody, mm-hmm. I mean, I do try and see the best in everybody. Yeah. You do. Maybe to a fault. But I did see somebody who who did, especially when he was talking to you, did get that he crossed the line. No, he apologized. And that was like, oh, that's I really appreciated him doing that. He did. And I don't think he realized the effect that that. And he's from Brooklyn. So how they say things. I mean, you know, there's like all of this. Yeah. He didn't realize he attacked because he thought he was only going at veterinarians, but he went at the entire industry. We don't just. We're family, like, yeah, and right. I'm, I'm a, I don't know how other clinics work, but you guys are my family. Like, I'm going to yeah. defend you. Right. I'm going to protect you all at all costs. Like, so then when you attack my person, don't do that, because <laughs> then that's why he got that right. backlash is because he attacked an entire industry yeah, because right. we're all very protective of each other and we all know what we bring to work every day. And so, yeah, there's he could so he many, definitely could have handled it better. There's so many elements to our industry, too. Yes. Yeah. And making a blanket statement is just not correct. Right. Yeah, it's just not fair. Yeah, right. It's just not fair. Agreed. I really like I will say real quick about one of my favorite points was the point that you made. And I I don't want to botch your words, but it was essentially saying like we it's not the veterinarian's responsibility to fix the issues with like the overrun um, shelters. And um, I believe that was the hang on. I wrote notes one second. (laughs) Well, I think you... I mean, I've loved a lot that you guys said, to be honest with you. I love that you said you can't just tell an industry like, okay, now you've made enough. Right. And just be done. Like, that's that can't be a thing. But um, anyway, I thought that was a really good point. Like, 
again, in the animal world and this industry, it's not just one department of health. It's also you have so many, so many different elements (laughs) that go into play. And so I thought that was a really good point of just saying it's not just on us. It can't be. Yeah. Just Agreed with this because you talked to me about it. So good job. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then after, before we get into everything else, um, I just also want to say we do not by any means condone mm-hmm. leaving him negative reviews, threatening his family, like all that, that is just not okay. And I don't want our industry to look like that. Like that's almost, in, yeah. it's just not worth it. Yeah. He's it's still human. We don't, yeah, like, you don't, that's just, I don't want us to sink down to that level. Absolutely. That's not okay. Yep. All right. Now, before we get into our inquiry for this week's episode, let's hear a word from our sponsor. Looking to protect your canine patients against parasites? Look no further than Semperica Trio, Seralaner Moxidectin and Pyrantal Chewable Tablets. The first chewable to offer triple protection from heartworm disease, ticks and fleas, and roundworms and hookworms. It's also FDA approved to block infections that may cause Lyme disease by killing deer ticks. Used with caution in dogs with a history of seizures, Seralaner belongs to the Isoxazoline class, which has been associated with neurologic adverse reactions. The most common side effects were vomiting and diarrhea. Visit SempericaTrioDVM.com for full prescribing information. Into our inquiry. Inquiry. Yes. All right. Into our inquiry. So we should do a backstory real quick. We just got this is one of the responses. That's okay. all there is. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. one of the responses, but it's very, very well written. Oh, so well written. It's and we're gonna break it down a little bit as just our primary focus of this podcast and conversation. Yes. So yeah, I guess we can break it up and you, discuss you go along ahead and the read way. First, okay. Hi, all star vet crew. First of all, huge fan here. Huge. Thanks. Thank you. (laughs) Love your guys' podcast episodes and TikTok and overall just vibe and culture you have fostered. I can't tell you how encouraging it is to see such a bright corner in vet med when so much of it is cast in shadow. Thank you so much, first and foremost, for being the patient advocates you are. And secondly, for everything you do for the veterinary community. Thank you so, so much. Wow, that makes I give me feel so good. Again. <laughs> yeah, me too. Thank you. I love the way she said cats in the shadow. Oh, I, I was like, do you write a book? I wonder if she's like a journalist. I don't or know, like a... but I was like, that's a great way of or saying he, it. Or he, I guess we She's very good we at don't words, know. right? Cats in the shadow is such a great like image of <laughs> that. <laughs> I didn't hear what you said. I said he or she. We don't know. Oh, yes. Okay. <laughs> oh, it's anonymous. <laughs> Well, it could be anonymous. There's a gazillion she's. True story. Yeah, okay. Anyway, sidetracked. Thank you for those compliments. Okay. Okay. A little background on me. I am 26 year old and I have been in vet med since 2016. I'm one okay, of those. Okay, so it's a 99% chance that it's a girl. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Well, because <laughs> that's you've actually been a good point. Okay. Everything, yeah. everything is female. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Especially at All Star. Okay. <laughs> I'm one of those that blur the lines between assistant technician as I've been trained on the job and have taken on many roles that have licensed my licensed peers also perform. I know that's a heated discussion. I try to navigate it as respectfully as possible. I work in UT where opportunities for education and licensing are limited as this state does not require a license. And with the staffing shortage crisis, many clinics in the state are doing what they can with what they have to stay afloat. 90% of our certified technicians are from out of state. I know that in an ideal world, the standard for required education would be more equivalent to human medicine, but for our industry, that feels much more like a luxury. I have done my best to learn about my work and the way that is safe for my patients, and I'm proud of the knowledge and skills I've accomplished. I'm lucky to work in a hospital that values innovation and education for both staff and clients, so I'm really grateful. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a really big point to hit on that because, in my opinion, I feel... I mean, you can wake up one or get out of high school and be like, yep, I'm going to be an animal nurse. That's what I'm going to do with my life. That's going to do the rest of my life. But I feel like a lot of the times you work in a clinic setting or you work in some kind of animal business and then you're like, yep, that's what I want to do. And then you go to school. So I feel like that's a that is a common occurrence of people being trained on the job as technicians. I think that's a big thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's and hard. I mean, it's hard. It's hard. Right. So and I think it goes back to the pay that a registered technician gets. Right. So if you. If you are, to your point, you're in high school, you graduate from high school, and you're like, mm, don't know if I want to become a technician. So you start working in a clinic. A clinic is shorthanded. They start training you and teaching you things. And then you're like, okay, well, if I, and then they start paying you more because you're doing more. Then, and it's a really good clinic. So they know what they're doing and they have a really good training mm-hmm. protocol and they teach you really good skills. 
Now you're three years out of high school and you're like, why well, put do myself I, into debt? Do I real right? Do mm-hmm. I really go to school? I'm making almost exactly what a registered veterinary technician is making. Mm-hmm. What's the advantage? Yeah. You offered that to me. You yes. and their old practice manager offered mm-hmm. that option to me and said, we'll just train you. Don't go to school because mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. we were understaderstaffed at the time. And yeah. Yeah. I mean, well, I mean, you have common. people who are intelligent, who are conscientious, who are, you know, goal setters. I mean, like they're going to be successful. They mm-hmm. have to be given the information and they have to be taught correctly. Mm-hmm. But I mean, they're going to end up, you know, and if say they were in a clinic that wasn't doing that, they're going to move on. Right. Mm-hmm. So I get the conundrum. Yeah. You know, and then you have the discrepancy across states. Yep. Which is also awkward. Like you don't know where life's going to lead and there's not really traveling. Like, so for nursing, you can have human nursing, you can have traveling nurses, right? Things of that. There's a lot of different niches you can go into. I, yes, I would argue that vet med and the industry as a whole has other niches, but not as many to offer, right? Like, mm-hmm. I think you can get specialized as a technician, but yes, yeah. again, if you're already out working and you don't have that, you didn't go to get that, you know, RVT, title um then you got to go back go back to school in order to go and get specialized like that's right. a lot it's so, a lot mm-hmm. it's a, it is a lot and i think in an ideal world absolutely sure everybody you know but when it comes to you know finances and mm-hmm. return on mm-hmm. investment that's what i was going to say it's so different in i mean like if this if you could if you could make the argument that the the salary discrepancy is so large that you would you know, you'd be silly. Bless you. Bless you. You'd be silly not to go. Twice. Bless you. Thank you. You'd be silly not to go back. Then, okay. Then it, you know, mm-hmm. then you should go back and get learn everything and sure. blah blah blah. But I mean, I do think there's probably a difference in, and I'm not sure exactly where the difference lies. And maybe because you went to Purdue, you might know. Mm-hmm. But the difference between like the four year degree at Purdue versus like the 18 month program right. I went to. I I mean I think it's I think it's goals maybe I Isn't think that, it's the difference is more hands on yeah and you get more you get to hospital. your skills you can grow your skills more there yeah rather than where I went because like I, I've said this on a podcast before I learned how to do nail trims on a cat I cut a singular cat nail I'd yeah. never learned how to do anal going to school we just yeah. didn't have the time because right. it's so fast paced there not I mean it's fast paced there too but, but they have a safe, more time a safety net right yeah. like you're intentionally in a teaching hospital where you're learning and yeah. you, it's not up to you. Yeah. Exposure we had like so much more. Exposure. We had animals, yeah. but we didn't have yeah. a hospital. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's just so different. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, maybe someday it'll get there, but I think the bottom line is the the pay is going to have to change at the, the just basic level of everyday technicians in order for right. them to. It's be all prompted. the circular argument, which means oh, you have it's to all charge circular. more, which yeah. means. I also think the that VTN we're back is to the stupid. same <laughs> argument of not being able to afford pet care. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It's all circular. And the bazinga. Yeah. yeah. It's just, yeah. So how does one change a wheel that just keeps, keeps going, 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 going? <laughs> <laughs> you have to be a pretty big peg to stop oh, that. So. Mm-hmm. But you should be proud of the skills that you've accomplished and knowing that you're doing it in a way that's safe for your patients. That's the utmost important, right? Mm-hmm. Like, you're approaching something you're learning and you're not comfortable or you've never done it, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. Put the patient's safety first. Yep. So absolutely. Okay. Go on. Carry on. You may owe me. Sure. Well, sure. Go for okay. it. I have some two cents to include into the conversation regarding the issues discussed with Dr. Levine. To start, major kudos to you guys and the way you handled yourselves during that talk. Y'all are stronger and far more patient than me. Ha <laughs> 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 Although I'd like to think I've polished my customer service skills with enough difficult clients to be able to handle myself as gracefully as you guys did. Thank you very much. Mm-hmm. Do you want to keep going? Because the next paragraph has, kind of plays she types out ha-ha it. and you go ha-ha and then you start laughing. <laughs> 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 okay, sorry. <laughs> okay, I just want to say one thing about this. This was one of the comments that we got quite frequently was, mm-hmm. you guys are so much more patient than us. I had to stop the video to, because I was so mad. Right. I'm like, you know, I think that one of the things that we really focused on was the whole, like, I think as a group, just being able to have conversations. Yeah. 
And like you said, it's the where they hated him right off the bat. They didn't hate his opinion. They hated him. Mm-hmm. They villainized him. So then they were like, I don't want to see his face. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't yeah. I don't want to hear a thing he has to say because he put this in. He put a bad taste in my mouth from his initial TikTok. And nope, I'm not doing it. Yeah, I yeah. think that's also the mindset that people had. Yeah. I think it's just, I mean, everyone rightfully, right. I want to have to watch my words sometimes. But like it took it. Everyone took it so personally which it's not wrong because it's a personal it attack. Hurt people's feelings. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I mean, I'm definitely one that fell under that too. I'm, you know, watching those videos and I'm upset because I feel like you always want to do better. You always say that too. You just want to do better. You don't want to disappoint people. And mm-hmm. when there's just controversial thoughts mm-hmm. saying that that's what you're doing, but they don't know you. Well, and I think you want to go to battle, you know? Yeah, you do. And you know that there's so many people that work so hard and there's so much. And that was one of the things we said to him is like, you know, there's so much anxiety and depression and, Mm -hmm. you know, we have a high suicide rate and people are overworked and underpaid. And like, you know, so like it was all those, you know, people jumping to all those people's defense. Oh, absolutely. Like they don't need another thing to feel bad about. You don't need to kick them when they're down. Like that kind of like, I think that was where it was all coming from, Mm -hmm. you know? Um, And I, and I completely understand that, you know, but to get. That's where you're going to, you're going to have the most impact for people to help people by getting rid of your own agenda and having patience. Mm -hmm doing the best way, whatever method you have to, to bring that to the table in order to then we were, we were, you were able to have a conversation that then brought a positive impact on everyone. So yes. you just have to, you have to look past your nose. Past, yeah. Yeah. You just have to. Those okay. are good points. Okay. Oh, you want me to do this one? <laughs> Okay, I'll do the next one. All right. <laughs> it goes without saying that it's not all just a single issue. It's so complex and multifaceted. It feels like running anesthesia. You tweak the gas and the heart rate goes down, but so does the blood pressure. You then increase fluids, but that messes with something else. But the patient is getting cold, so you also have to take that into account when adjusting this other thing. It's also interconnected that fixing one single issue will often have cascading consequences in other areas. And that's the case with vet men. I Amen. freaking love that paragraph. Yes. So <laughs> it is true. such a good analogy. It is so yes. beautifully written and bingo. Yep. Yes, it is like, a cascade of yes. madness. Oh my gosh. Because you think, okay, we'll do this. And then you're like, oh. But yeah. what about this? What about this? Oh, yeah, but then we, if we do that, but <laughs> that's why we're like, that's what we were just talking about, right? Okay, yeah. we'll just raise RBT salaries. Oh, the wheel. It's going to keep What's gonna where, Where's then? the extra where, money going to come from? Where's that money going to come yeah. from? Oh, yeah. wait. Yep. Yeah. Mm. That's so beautifully right. There's I just love so it. much to it. There's so much to it. Mm-hmm. Also, positive ah! potatoes and potato. Get back up there. He said he's had enough. <laughs> you know, he's like, he's tired. It's late. He wants to go to bed. <laughs> oh, my gosh. All right. You mean, oh, okay. So I'll go. (laughs) Read to that break right there and then we can. That's the second thing. Okay. Gotcha. It seemed to me that Dr. Levine was mainly concerned with raising prices, making pet ownership unfeasible for many people. One point that he brought up was that people will not be able to adopt and shelters will fill up. Courtney mentioned that shelters are already full and Dr. King brought up the truth that it isn't veterinary professionals responsibility to absorb that mammoth of a task. He's talking about overpopulation stemming from vet pro, Vets profiting, which is frankly a narrow point of end and well wrong. Not to say that there aren't bad vets, but I think that it's safe to generalize that as factually incorrect. But that's such a non-nuanced discussion. Not to point any fingers, maybe wag a finger, but what about unethical backyard breeders that are selling poorly bred pups at 2000 a pop with no regard for their health? They are truly turning turning a profit. And the mama often gets euthanized the second she's no longer profitable or gets a pyometra, I think is what she was going for. I can't tell you how often we see that here in Utah, and I'm sure you guys see it too. It's truly heartbreaking. I've seen many puppies from different families come to us with Parvo, and we've been able to trace them back to the same breeder. Talk about exacerbating our caseload. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. Well, you already know it's complicated. Mm -hmm. Amen. Which I think that is all very, very good points. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Yeah. That's all. Okay. I think that's good. <laughs> the second thing I've been thinking about, I've honestly hesitated to really bring it up to anyone, mostly because there's no real graceful way or diplomatic way to put it. I hope you guys can see where I'm coming from. And this might vary from region to region, but I found that many clients don't value their pets the same across the board. I know that's a harsh statement, but I've had my heart shattered too many times by the words, I'm not spending that I'm not spending that on a damn cat when discussing an estimate for vaccines. Vaccines, basic care. Many people see their pets more as property than family. Many people list their pets differently on their spectrum of priorities. I feel like I can say this with some semblance of truth because of the number of times I felt like I care more about the pet than the owner. Hello, burnout. Ha ha. And that is an incredibly nuanced discussion that is really, really difficult to have because there's no real solution for it. I'm not even sure it would be productive, but I don't think it can be completely ignored in the overall conversation of costs in a client run industry. I was talking with one of my doctors just today and we counted how many patients we had walked out AMA, which is against medical advice this week alone. Eight. Eight pets went without care and six of them were for issues that were relatively not that costly. And by the, by that, I mean exams, diagnostics, and treatments all for $200 to $300. We were blown away and we were combed through and we combed through these cases to see what we could have done differently that could have resulted in a more beneficial outcome for the pets. It sucks. Yes. That's 100% correct. That's a hard hurdle, hard hurdle to get over, not caring more for the pet than the owner does. Yep. That is a very difficult thing to not do. And you don't want to use the term jaded. You don't want to become jaded because then I feel like that that term alone makes you feel like at least for me personally speaking for myself i feel like by saying that i lose my compassion mm -hmm. and that's not true either you have to compartmentalize your feelings like when people ask all the time how do you do what you do with all the euthanasias well it still sucks i'm still sad but you have to learn how to put it in its own little container to mm -hmm. literally be able to move through the day yep. and so not that we're not sad that people aren't choosing basic care because that makes us sad. We want to do that for them and for the animal. But what can you do? You can't. You will not last long in your career if you care no. for every. Not care, care but you can't. The owner cares. Yes. basically, is the statement that. And you can't care sometimes. for every pet out there. That will kill you. The owner, because you keep. You no, can't I think that you that. can do what you're doing, which is say, okay, what what are the bare minimums we can do to continue to provide a health benefit for the pet? Mm -hmm. You know, um, and when that pet no longer can um, have a good quality of life, then you do consider euthanasia. And in some instances, you know, that might be what you might consider premature because it has diabetes and it's a treatable problem. But mm -hmm. we always don't, I don't think we're here, and I'm not saying that this person is saying this at all, but I mean, we really try not to judge, right? Because we don't know right. what's going on in people's lives. We don't know what's going on in their relationships. We don't know what's going on with their finances. We are strictly here to provide information and care. Yep. What you do with the information is up to you. Yeah. I mean, so our job, I've always considered my job to be provide the best care and the best options possible and then help you allocate your funds appropriately to get the best effect, to maximize the effect for the dollar that you spend. Mm -hmm. And that's all I can do. I, I wish it could be different. And I think that you sound like you have a clinic that you could set up like the foundation. Set up a foundation that your good clients can donate to that then allow, because everybody, here's the thing, people like to be a part of something bigger than themselves. So if you give your clients the opportunity to be a part of something bigger than themselves, which is to provide care for people who can't have it or get it or afford it, then you'll see that they provide that for those people. Mm -hmm. Give them an avenue to provide that type of care. So form a foundation and advertise for it and, and then Advertise the cases that you're able to fix through the foundation, mm -hmm. set up a board that allocates where the funds go and pick cases and fix those patients. And you will be able to make a difference. Yeah. I mean, so like I think that's the biggest way that independent clinics can make a difference on their own mm -hmm. and not, you know, for their own community. Yeah. Their community of clients, basically. Yes. That's what or, I think. like even be open to. I mean, just be okay with help directing them to somewhere that maybe they could be able to afford it. Like, mm -hmm. there is nothing wrong. You're not going to lose all your business by saying, hey, you know what? We have like a low cost facility that maybe you do vaccines there mm -hmm. if you don't have many concerns. But then that way, we're still here for you if there are further diagnostics that we need to dive into. Right. Or maybe like, hey, let's not do 
so-and-so or whatever today at this visit. Let's kind of postpone and focus on this because this is your priority yes. and this is your concern or this is the emergent situation. Like, um, there's so many ways to literally, I always say, help me help you. Literally, mm-hmm. it sounds cheesy, but like, yeah. help, tell me, be honest with me of what, where you're at with your pet, where you're at with your, I don't know, life to a loose right. degree and your priorities. And then I can help direct you the best of my, my education has allowed me to do so. Right. Yeah. It's just providing what we, we're giving what we've learned and trying to help it's circular way. Right. It's a circle. <laughs> it's a wheel. Dance circle. <laughs> Everything's a circle. <laughs> yep. Oh gosh. I don't think she should feel bad for saying that either because oh, it's no. so realistic. It's, it's so realistic. It is daily. This is a this is a mindset that everyone struggles with in mm-hmm. our industry because of the disparity yeah. in financial um acumen between clients across the board. Yep. So I mean there's not a single practice. I mean, maybe some like bougie, like, just, <laughs> like I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Like, shit. <laughs> you know, like all, they only have like these kinds of, you know, whatever. Yeah. But I mean, everybody struggles with this mindset. Yes. It is not foreign, you're, you know. And so I think it's great to talk about it because mm-hmm. the more people talk about it, the more you don't feel like you're alone. You know, less of the burnout. Less of a burnout. Like right. Mm-hmm. Just exactly. acknowledging like it. Unfortunately, it is the situation, but that doesn't mean it has to end there. You right. can find ways to still help the people and the patient. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Okay. Do you want me to go? go? Yep. Okay. Additionally, a lot of people don't see the value in vet med. Literally today, I had an owner write, that's crazy, next to the CPR. <laughs> <laughs> I read that the first time. I laughed out loud, too, because I'm like, that is just like crazy. <laughs> and he wrote crazy next to, that's crazy, next to the CPR directive that listed potential cost of an emergency under anesthesia on our surgical authorization form. He declined. I guess he doesn't realize the knowledge, equipment, drugs, resources, manpower, and em- an emergency calls for. That's okay. All I could do was chuckle at that. But again, I guess my point is that it's all just too complex. Yep. I think that's also a big thing is a lot of people are just not educated and it's not their fault, but they don't know what goes into an emergency on a cat, on a dog. And you can do CPR on animals. Yes. Maybe you didn't know. Maybe the owner did not know it's possible. You don't know what you don't know. Yeah. Yep. That's what I'm saying. And yeah. it just happens. Yep. Yeah. And I think people's relationships with their pets are just different. Yep. Yeah. Some people view them as family members. Some people view them as just a dog. You know, I used to joke that's around okay. that somebody, you know, clients will always ask you in a room, like, would you, what would you do if it was your dog? Yeah. And my response has always been, which dog? Because <laughs> <laughs> you have which, a favorite. <laughs> which dog? I would do this for this dog, but I may not do it for this dog. Mm-hmm. And I'm certainly not doing it for that. Dog, <laughs> yeah. But I would do this for that dog, but yeah. not for that dog. I mean, like, it really depends. Yeah. On your relationship with the animal. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, that might sound crass. I don't know. But that's just how I've always viewed it. It's like, I don't know. I can't tell you because I don't know what I would do if it was, it it, it would just depend. Mm -hmm. It would cost more for a Great Dane versus a a Chihuahua. Chihuahua. Yeah. Yeah. So many factors. And also, we're obviously not advocating for like someone to own an animal and just neglect them. Oh, no. That's That's definitely not okay either. There needs to be basic care, basic needs. Um met and that does include health care like basic needs include health care and so um it's responsible definitely, money management yeah don't adopt a pet if you can't optional you expense don't have a kid if you can't afford a kid it applies to animals <laughs> <laughs> it's it's definitely just it's complex it just is that's a good word complex. yep all right take all right, us home courtney all righty here we go Dr. Levine's dialogue surrounding this issue frustrates me for all the reasons you guys mentioned on your podcast. It felt personal and harsh. But at this point, what is most frustrating to me is his willing or his willful ignorance. I will say willfully, very unintentionally. No, I, intentionally. Again. Oh, very intent. <laughs> I will say willfully. I, I will willfully say. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe just start over. (laughs) It's so dark over here. I can't see the paper. (laughs) And I say willfully, very intentionally. Did I get it right that time? Yes, you did. (laughs) I don't mean it in a disrespectful way, but after watching the fruitless back and forth in your conversation, I can't think of another way to describe it. The way I see it, he's looking at this one particular issue through the wrong end of the telescope and people are trying to turn it. Some are trying to nudge it gently, like you guys, and others are helpfully trying to whack it on. 
<laughs> it, uh, it's swivel. But he seems to only want to look through the wrong end and his view is distorted. I hope he can open his mind. He's a smart guy. I'm sure he'll realize some truth someday. Thanks for hearing me out and putting up with this long-winded email. This topic has seen has been weighing heavily on my mind and I guess I just wanted to reach out to put in my two cents but also to thank you guys again thank you thank you thank you for all you do you guys are incredible I hope you have a wonderful day of full Mm. or wonderful day full of boring lab results (laughs) satisfying catheter placements and many happily approved estimates I love that last (laughs) statement boring lab work nothing hurts more when you come in and all your lab results are red (laughs) yes it's like and you're like oh no what do I do oh gosh it is true that is true yep so yeah great email great Mm -hmm. two cents yep yeah I I very much liked it summary yes it was a great well-written summary of yes I definitely like the way she yeah he she put it (laughs) (laughs) But oh that is where we end this discussion. That is, That's we're going to close the book on it. We're going to close the book on the topic. Um, we're moving on. Yep. We had the moving crucial com- crucial conversation. Points were tried to be made. Agreed to disagree. Blah, blah, blah. Yes. So we are going to move on. And we're going to share more fun cases and have more guests. And we're just going to focus on the vet men that we love. That's yes. right. Absolutely. Yep. Okay. I think that's all I got. Oh, my pots and potatoes say goodbye. <laughs> the, the bye-bye. The potato says bye-bye. <laughs> bye-bye, potato. <laughs> all right. Thank you so much for tuning into another episode of the Veterinary Roundtable. Remember, send in those questions and leave us a review if you enjoyed this episode or a previous one. We'll see you next week for another episode of the Veterinary Roundtable. Whoop, whoop. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you and good night. <laughs> <laughs>